Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Paragon the Overprime going into early access in just a few hours. Wanted to go over some of the hero changes uh, at a high level from the patch notes. The patch notes are a little bit convoluted, so this is just kind of broken down very simply. Let's get right into it. First up, Gadget needed a little bit of a nerf. Uh, her bomb was hitting way too hard, uh, and that's pretty much what's happened here. Uh, we got a little bit of a uh, cast speed increase on her uh, line, which is that thing that that slows enemies and speeds up allies. Uh, and then the bomb, of course, the range got reduced a little bit, I believe two meters, uh, reduced power scaling, reduced base damage. So overall, a little bit of reduction on the bomb, which was really in her kit overpowered. Next is Gideon, got a little bit of a buff. Distortion got increased range. The Meteor got increased range. Devour, the pull strength has been increased. And also um, a little bit of cast immunity on Devour since it is kind of a high risk, high reward ability. Uh, and so uh, I guess the devs thought that uh, not en enough people were investing in that skill because it was being interrupted. All right, Fang Mao, Auspicious Spirit, uh, reduce cooldown and shield value increased, which is interesting to me because it was still, um, seemed like, uh, at least, so if I'm a Rampage in solo landing, there's a Fang Mao, it seems like every time my rock is up, he's able to predict the rock throw, because obviously you pick the rock up and you go to throw it, and essentially negate the damage with the shield, so, mm, I don't know, like, what the deal is with that. That shield is designed so that you see a telegraph on a damaging ability and you essentially shield yourself from that ability. So not sure what's going on with that, but we'll take it, I guess. Uh, phase, pretty big nerf. Um, the tether got nerfed pretty good. Uh, so um, synchronizer reduced total tether time. So if you stayed within range of the enemy that you tethered, the tether would stay on like forever. So they cut that time in half. Uh, the distance to actually tether someone was cut in half, and the distance that you have to get away from phase in order to break the tether was reduced a little bit. Um, and then the tether is now more difficult to land. Uh, and then flash burst, which is that uh, blind AoE, um, they reduced the blind time down to, I believe, two seconds. Uh, and then Murdoch, nothing really big here. Target check, um, reduced damage scaling, which is the missile thing. Uh, they just reduced the damage on it. No, no, no big updates there. Uh, Twin Blast, pretty big nerf here uh, relative to the buffs and nerfs. Um, no Mercy, uh, reduced the damage scaling and possibly uh, removed the basic attack clipping. So what they were saying is that um, you could clip the animation with basic attack, which I believe I probably did. Again, carries... the. Carry abilities should not be doing a lot of damage. They are basic attack heroes. Their um, abilities, their skill abilities supplement their base damage or buff their base damage. They should not be relying on like that ability to do the majority of their damage. There's some good AoE there if you're trying to clear minions, but no carry, a damaging ability except for an ultimate on a carry should not be hitting very hard anyway. Uh, burn to ashes, base damage reduced, damage scaling reduced. Again, like I said, abilities for carries shouldn't really be doing that much damage anyway. The AoE is there, and it's great for early game uh, for clearing lane, but um, th that's fine with Twin Blast. His, he's doing really well. Highest attack speed, uh, great uh, balance of um, basic attack power. Movement speed reduced. I, for whatever reason, he had a little bit more uh, innate movement speed than the other carries, so they reduced that very slightly. I mean, probably not even noticeable. Shin B, uh, a little bit more increased mana regen on the, fan on the summon Phantom, and then uh, Phantom Dance, uh, as far as the magic scaling, increased damage there. Didn't see a lot of Shinbis during the last test, surprisingly, prior, especially in comparison to the prior one. Uh, Howitzer was absolutely crushing in this last beta test, and Howitzer was not meta at the end of Paragon, uh, but they nerfed his, his missile uh, quite a bit here, so they reduced the range, reduced the base damage, and the magic scaling, so that missile, kind of like Gadget's bomb, uh, got nerfed quite a bit. Uh, okay, so Bellica, 
She was hitting extremely hard in the previous closed beta test. And this past one, she was still pretty good, but she definitely was not hitting like she was before. Um, so on the suppress, they increased uh, damage scaling a little bit, increased the range, and then they nerfed her turret a little bit. It was kind of OP, especially in solo lane with this caster solo lane meta. If you're going against um, any sort of tank melee hero, that uh, turret was extremely overpowered. And so they reduced the range on it so that you basically get in range of it. It will start sucking your mana if you're uh, ranged, but you can kill it. You can start shooting it as soon as it starts sucking your mana. Prior to that, you had to get even closer. Anyway, reduce the range and then reduce the health. So it should be four hits to destroy it now instead of six. All right, so Xena, the new uh, warrior. I saw a lot of really good Xenas. They were utilizing uh, her leap really well. Um, and that got uh, nerfed a little bit. So the damage, the base damage and the scaling got reduced. That is, in my opinion, extremely well-timed um, skill. So props to all those really good Xenas out there that were absolutely crushing. She is pretty fun for their first original hero. And I like that they added in uh, some uh, mechanics that we haven't seen before with her. Uh, Quang, uh, so they reduced the damage on Crescent Moon. Apparently with Crescent Moon and some other uh, item you could buy with Quang. I didn't play Quang probably at all this, this last test. Um, there was something with magic scaling that was just too broken. So they reduced the, the magic scaling damage on the basic attack. If you played Quang, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, other than that, nothing really crazy. Nothing else going on with Quang. Uh, Muriel, a little bit of a buff. Uh, so the her orb, Glory of uh, Osni, um, that got a buff as far as the amount of move or the length of movement speed and the shield that someone will get whoever uh, receives that buff, which is that orb. Uh, and then Faithful Vow, they increase the um, shield duration on that as well. Uh, Decker Plasma Dome, which is her ultimate, um, increased the duration a little bit. So uh, nothing crazy there. Um, Aurora, pretty big buff overall. I know there's not a lot on the slide here. Um, her damage was pretty bad. I was able to build her to where uh, I was... I bought, like, the attack speed item that also gives you magical power. And basically, I bought the item that uh, transfers a portion of your magical power into physical damage. And that allowed me to give her more damage, but her damage was abysmal in this last uh, test. So they did uh, buff her quite a bit here. Um, so her circle of ice, glacial barrier, increased damage, increased damage scaling, and then her ultimate, ultimate glacial exposure, glacier explosion, uh, got buffed as well. Same thing, base damage increase and damage scaling, which her ultimate, the damage on her ultimate was abysmal as well. That used to hit very hard, uh, if you put a lot of magical power into her. All right. Uh, the Fae. Now, I, the Fae is one of my favorite characters. Really, really good buff here. Incredible buff. Um, not that I thought... I mean, she was a little bit weak, but not that I thought that she needed it. So, first thing, Forest's Will, um, which is the right mouse button skill. Cast range increase and the ability effective range increase. So, that's that circle AoE. Uh, Forest Warning, which is the uh, ultimate... Um, I don't know why that was a single... I don't think it was single target before. They have it marked as ultimate, but that... No, that, that's not the ultimate. Forest Warning is the... Uh, that's the... Uh, that should be the single skill shot poke, so that might be marked incorrectly. Um, again, they renamed all the skills, so I, I don't know what all they're, they're all called, but I believe the single shot um, poke for Faye was changed to AoE. The only issue I have with that is that uh, you get the mana refunded if you hit an enemy hero, and it's a lock-on as well. So in Paragon, it was not a lock-on. It was a skill shot. In this, in this one, it's a lock-on. So that's kind of weird to me that it's AoE, uh, because specifically because, one, it's a lock-on, so it's a guaranteed hit. 
And then secondly, if you hit a hero with it, you get the mana back. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, and then Forest Wind, which is the uh, the line um, of vines, there was an increased movement speed buff. Anyway, really excited to play the Fey after this buff. One of my favorites. Uh, Countess, um, they reduced the cooldown on her uh, on her Blood Ripple. Now, she was still zero to sixty-ing people in the uh, last test to the point that people were raging, but. She was definitely not as broken as she was in the prior test. So um, it's for her, it's it's fine, I guess. Uh, Sarath, a little bit of a buff. was They switched Sarath from carry to essentially a warrior. So she's kind of like can be built like a DPS bruiser. Um, and a lot of people were doing really well with Sarath in the last test. Uh, execution by illusion, increased invincibility time, and reduced skill delay. Again, I think I, I didn't play Sarah. She's never been one that I liked. Maybe I'll start playing her that she's a warrior now. But uh, apparently there was like an animation thing where it was more focused on the time of the animation. And it just took too long to cast, so they reduced that. And then her invincibility uh, time um, has been increased. Uh, summoned Angel of Balance, uh, increased the duration... For that uh sparrow uh a little bit of a buff on reign of arrows so um i put the slow duration on there i think it was so actually i might have wrote that wrong it might have been increased the amount of slow but anyway the slow on reign of arrows got buffed and then swift arrow they increased the movement speed buff and the attack speed buff so that's good uh, so she's got a little bit of a buff Swift Arrow, I love that ability on her because it really <laughs> gives you that attack speed and uh, kind of puts her into uh, overdrive. Uh, Severog, saw a lot of Severogs this last playthrough, by the way. Uh, Deadly Declaration, uh, decreased cooldown. I, I don't think that he was overpowered, if anything, maybe a little bit underpowered. Obviously, his ultimate is great for uh, zoning and for knocking people in and out of towers. So... He does, for a tank, he's got a ton of utility, so that's one that is kind of difficult to balance. Uh, Kala, uh, I always call him Calamari. Kalari, uh, a little bit of a, uh, not a nerf, a buff, excuse me. So the stealth, uh, even if you are able to hit him, or actually her, I, I think Kalari, or Kalari, Calamari, Kalari is a female. Either way, um... The only way they get knocked out of their stealth is with a hard CC now. Obviously, the counter to this hero is wards, and wards are really easy in this in this game right now. So um, nothing too crazy, and I didn't think uh, Kalari was too OP in the last test. Um, and then Chimera uh, got a little bit of a buff. I thought Chimera played really well. You know, some of these heroes, they just weren't really meta endgame in... Um, Paragon, and there's really no way in, in some cases to balance them without really ch changing them to make them meta. Again, this is a jungler who has always been able to be countered by uh, hard CCs, and that's how you counter a Chimera, and that's the point, um, which is, by the way, and I hate to throw shade at uh, what's the predecessor, but when I saw that they added an ability so that he gets a CC immune, and it's got like an eight second cooldown, I'm like, there's no way to freaking counter this guy now, realistically, to counter his health regen. Anyway, the way you counter his health regen is you hard crowd control him and knocks him out of his stacks. They increased his health regen a little bit. Was really happy to see him in this last test. Loved playing as him. This is one of my favorite junglers. Um, obviously, this is one that really didn't provide a whole lot of utility for the super high elo and competitive people at the end of Paragon, but you could easily play uh, Chimera in like high golds, uh, and be fine uh, at the end of Paragon. But anyway, that's the overview of that. Uh, you can see more detailed notes on the heroes, on the item changes, the bug fixes, all that stuff. It's all laid out. Remember, this is a Korean company, so um, the translations are getting better. I'll give them credit on that. But some of the translations to English have not been too great. Now, remember, I know that traditionally we think of Paragon as um, more of an English market. But Paragon the Overprime, it is developed in Korea. And if you think of the Eastern Asian market, it's like 
if they are focusing on that market, which I don't know if they are, it's one of the largest markets there is. I mean, it is the largest market if you just cut it up um, that way. Now, obviously, North America uh, as a whole has the largest market um, and the vast majority of people in North America speak English, even those ones in Spanish speaking countries. Um, and then there's some other really large markets as well. But this is a Korean company developing this game. So um, in the beginning, I don't think they invested a lot in the English translations and you can see that across the board. It's definitely getting better. Things are a lot more uh, cohesive in terms of um, kind of things that we're used to when we when we read things in English, um, that someone who maybe their first language wasn't English and they learned English, when they translate it, it doesn't come across uh, quite the way that we'd expect it, the same way for any language. If my first language is English and I'm trying to translate to Spanish, um, sometimes the structures of the sentences don't come out right uh, and the translations aren't quite the same. Anyway, uh, really excited to play the test. Get in there, uh, 11 a.m. Korean Standard Time, December 8th. Get in there, play it, see you all in there.